Man, you want to make sure he can come in for the kill, man, make that move. And it's not about that, man. You know, sex should be the least of our worries in this day. Sex is going to come. Brothers know, like, brothers know I love sex. Sex is one of the best things ever, the most high ever created. Yeah. But you know what? I understand about balance, man. I'm not thinking about sex while I'm trying to get my nation right. I'm not thinking about sex while I'm trying to get myself in order. You know, so it's a balance to it. It's not always about sex, man. Brothers got to rule their spirits. But we're going on that on a whole nother damn subject. So let's get back to, uh... <laughs> this I'm point. Trying to get out of that though. Keep it G. Yeah, well, it's, it's it's a stumbling block, you know. Yeah. Most I knew what he was doing when he created breasts. When he made hips. It's like, dude, when he this, made dude, long, this. colorful, beautiful types of hair and the eye colors, right. the soft skin. Some 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 brothers like the rough skin. What? The? Some brothers like a woman with some firm skin. Everybody, every brother got his preference. That's why every brother shouldn't be trying to commit adultery because you know you got you like what you like, you got what's what's your lot, and, and vice versa. Yeah. But that's a whole nother subject, man. We could talk about that for days. Yeah, but the, the <laughs> thing I was thinking about when we gonna continue, brothers, maybe you know the law how we deal with uh, uh, heathen women. Okay. Maybe we should start doing that with Israelite women. Not, I mean, I don't know about cutting the hair and the nails, but waiting 30 days or something. I don't know about that, brother. However, the <laughs> Lord allowed to spend that because time out. I'm just saying in a sense that, like, a lot of brothers, like, I could say that for myself, we don't have great rule of our spirit when it comes to that. Cut, cut, cut. So it's just like to, to, to try to be more spiritual about it because, man. Now, I hear where you're coming from yeah, totally. I, yeah. that's, that's order, though. I mean, you're not trying to get into a woman's draw at the first second you meet her, man. Nah, you know, a sociopath would, though, because it's all about control and domineering power. <laughs> And a lot of women, a lot of women, most of the, because I've been looking into the subject on sociopaths, a, a lot of the books are written by women because they've dealt with sociopath men, and psychopathic men, you know, that use their, their domineering tactics and their grandiose personalities to uh, get into them, them, them panty drawers. But uh, going back into the, the lesson of the message, it says, um, what better what better disguise for a wolf than as a shepherd of the flock? The sheep tend to think that the pastor is here to herd them, guard them, to take care of them, and administer their needs as a shepherd does over his flock. The wolf knows this and conveys it. He exudes it. He radiates love and concern. And he projects humility of the wanting to help others. And he preaches the charisma that as their shepherd, he needs to be submitted to, trusted, and pitied when others are against him. The shepherd's costume and his disguise, he is a false shepherd, a deceitful worker turning them away from the true shepherd a religious sociopath is highly intelligent is a highly intelligent person who is manipulative and cunning with superficial charm that's superficial charm man he's coming at you and you think that because of his energy is in a certain way you think that he's okay but he's really he's waiting for you to lower your defenses so he can get you just like Esau. Just like Esau, man. That's what it said in the scripture. He's a cunning hunter. Mm -hmm. so you turn these scriptures into like we're hunting spiritually for yep. brothers. For, this, for the very reason that you're about to bring out right now. Yep. Justifying his selfish motivations as permissible because God wants me to do this for the good of the group. He does not recognize the rights of others. His motivation is sometimes revealed in the indecent ridicule of humiliating victims. Justifying it by saying he needs to keep order are to protect his flock. If he can't, if he can get away with the ridicule, he gains more control. And we know that this whole order thing amongst the brotherhood is deviated into brothers closing their mouths and not saying anything to uh, wickedness that they see and darkness that they see amongst the brotherhood. A religious sociopath enjoys the opportunities to intimidate and ridicule, relishing the fear of followers Rel relishing the fear of followers have him as a powerful leader with secret delight so in behind closed doors man these dudes love all of this praise that they're getting they love it man they enjoy it it's actually a high that they get just like you can get high off marijuana or cocaine or any drug you can get high as hell off of pride and off of power man a guy giving you accolades and giving you all types of um praises man you can actually get high off that you get you get a um What's that called? You get all different types of chemicals flowing through your head just from things like getting praise, just from things like somebody giving you a prize or giving you a reward. You get high off that, man. You get endorphins rushing through your brain. Chemical highs. 
When wrongdoing is committed by devoted followers, it is just another opportunity to humiliate them. But he needs to mask his secret pleasure of it. So he's not going to tell you he gets off off the buke. Because that's what the main thing you hear brothers is talking about is the judgment and the rebuke. They're not talking about um, the, re the restoration and the correction. It's all about the rebuke. Hey, brother, take the low, take the low. That's, that's exactly what a, per uh, uh, a crack or an Edomite hires a uh, do the dominatrix to do. To come over and torment them. And they'll pay you for it. Brothers give them all these tithes because of the rebuke and the suffering that they're taking under these sociopaths. And they feel like they're doing a righteous deed and they're winning spiritual brownie points with the Most High because they're being in subjection to a man. Because this man brings out the scripture uh, incorrectly talking about being subject to your master. And he don't even understand himself that that's talking about an employee. I mean, I'm sorry, an employer. You ain't got no, you ain't got no uh, spiritual uh, masters in the sense of being a professor or a teacher, man. There ain't no masters in that context unless you're talking about Yahweh Shai. I got a precept to that too. Go ahead, Ak. And this is in uh, Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. It says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity mm -hmm. where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from Yahweh our power. We're still in captivity today. So for you to be a master over me and someone's master over you, who's really the master? Come on. You know what I'm saying? So our masters, unfortunately, we're still in slavery, obviously. So our masters are still the people who rule this earth. We're not in rulership. So how am I going to be a master to someone who takes order for someone, someone else, man? <laughs> So like, it's like basically in a sense like, okay, you the assistant, he's the manager, yeah. who, who's really, whose authority really matters. Yeah. And it's not to say that we're supposed to be subject to Esau's laws and stuff. We just understand that whoever controls the money controls the world. Yeah. And he runs the world right now. And also to add on to that, the scriptures do tell us to be obedi obedient to the king and obedient to the, to the laws and the lands and the rulers. And we do that just to keep our freedom. Right. But if those laws or if any of those um, commandments of these... Um, rulers of this society cause us to go off like if there was a law stating that we had to eat pork then we breaking that law yeah. period point blank so we to follow the most highest laws ultimately but we are subject unto these masters whether they be our employers our governors our presidents we're, we're under them and we have to um, obey their command otherwise they can throw us in jail but these brothers that showing you the word and teaching you the scriptures so called are pointing you into the scriptures you, they're not your masters man by that, by that, by that uh, description, they can tell you to do anything and you got to listen to them. Because the scriptures talk about the froward and the unbelieving master. So if you got you, if, if your pastor don't believe in the Bible, you're supposed to listen to him? That's crazy as hell, man. No, that's not talking about your church pastors or your preachers or your elder brothers in, in, in your house shop. That's not talking about them. Those are your fellow brothers and your fellow laborers. That's right. If you were cast in a prison, you already know for a fact that according to the Esau's laws, when you're in prison, you're a slave. Like literally, how they treat you, you're literally back on the plantation. Yep. We still in the plantation, but it's it's psychological now. Yep. They give you the impression of freedom, but you have to go according to their rules and regulations to maintain this false inter uh, uh, sense of freedom. Come on. <laughs> but once you make a crime, and they'll, and according to Jake, they'll do anything they can to put you in a crime. I don't even know if you go to another state. And you don't have a job, you can go to prison for that. Mm. So it's like, you know, you they'll do anything to keep Jake in prison. Yeah. And if you're in prison, they can do what the hell they want you to. Yep. We know this devil Esau, man. He used to make laws just to put Jake in jail. Yep. Laws of vagrancy, the laws of um, he's the the Jack Johnson law. Different different laws that they uh put in effect just to uh put Jake in prisons, man. And you think doing the work the way y'all doing is going to keep Jake out of prison and justify with spirituality? No, you're creating rapists, man. You're creating uh, carnal men. You're creating very violent men. You're not telling bros to be temperate and rule their spirit. You got brothers in the spirit of, at any drop of a hat, I'm ready to get down. And that's not the spirit to be in, man. For righteousness, yes. But just in this world, man, just get by and, 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 and try to strive for salvation, man.
Because the Lord had men that were killers oh, yeah. for righteousness. Yeah, Peter. You know, and remember that dude I told you about who was talking about, who was coming at me file about the rape thing? Okay. He made a video talking about rape is lawful in the scriptures. I didn't even watch it. I'm not even gonna lie, because yeah. I'm like, I don't even want to hear that stuff. Yeah, 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 but it's just like, that's their reward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When the, when all hell breaks loose, I'm gonna be a nigga now. Yeah. Remember yeah. that girl that was denying me? <laughs> I'm gonna go take her shit and ain't nobody gonna do nothing about it. That's your reward. Okay. You so focused on what you gonna get when the, that's why y'all focus so much on the destruction because all the things that you hold back, those lusts, they're gonna come to the forefront. Yep. So y'all putting on for now. So when it when times happen, remember I told you in the scriptures, yep. I'm gonna take your ass now. Yep. You know, and that's all it's about, and that's your reward. You're supposed to be spiritual man. You teach your brothers to be carnal, but but be wolves and sheep clothes. Mm -hmm. Have the impression of being a spiritual man, but when when it's time to um, um, unmask yourself, you are gonna devour devour other people. Yep. It says religious sociopaths feel like feel that they are entitled to have their way since it is their right to abuse people being extremely sophisticated liars and we know that the elders of great millstone and of a lot of these different camps are liars we can prove it all we got to do is chop up and edit and put it out there and show you yourself lying show yourself bearing bearing false witness so don't say that we liars for calling you liars we could actually prove it and there's many different instances of it. Just for one, going and saying, um, Yahana is uh, on heroin. He's a heroin addict. You know that that's a damn lie, man. So, I mean, you know, don't 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 force us to point out, your, put your face in your own dung more. Because we, we'll do it and we'll be more than glad to do it. Shit, recall, he celebrates birthdays. Come oh, on. That's a lie. Oh, I didn't write that. They got video proof of him saying it. I, I didn't write that. Mouth. I didn't write that, though. I... You know what I mean? <laughs> it says, but extremely sophisticated liars, they decide to believe their own lies at will. See, a real liar, man, he'll lie so much and he'll start believing his own lies. Because he's a sociopath and he's psychotic. He's a psychopath. They are extremely refined in their, in their quickly thought out persuasive answers. Knowing to whom and when they can lie and get away with it. It's like when that guy Polite was uh, asking him about the uh, the raping and the goose said, yeah, you can go out there and you can rape 11, 12-year-old girls. As long as she passed her flower. And I said, that's an outright bold-faced lie, man. And that lie is deserving of death. Just by you telling that lie, if you don't repent, man, you deserve to get your whole head lobbed off. You fat, pudgy liar. And if it was so, uh, if rape was truly lawful, then why is there consequences for it? Come on, come on. You know, you don't have you have a consequence for something that's lawful. That doesn't make sense. That's hypocrisy, man. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, contradiction, contradiction the word in, in, in itself because you're trying to justify it. And then talking about you looking at your niece. What the hell is wrong with you, man? You oh man, she going to titties now. Like that's your niece, man. Are you serious? It's a dark world, man. What would you do if you woke up three in the morning and your niece, your cousin, who was a virgin, she was unbetrothed, she's in the room getting raped by somebody. You gonna walk in the room, hear her, see her getting raped, and be like, "Oh, and the brother, I got, I got the shekels." You gonna know, you gonna turn around and walk away? Hey, hey, you believe you a, you a, you a Israelite, right? All right yeah. Oh, hey, like, right, brother, just leave the shekels on the counter on the dresser. We cool. Nah, man, you gonna you gonna try to kill that dude, man? He's gonna die. He's hey, it's happening. He's gonna die. It's happening. Don't don't lie to yourself just to try to seem righteous. Keep it real. Somebody's raping someone you love, it's your folks, and especially if they're young, they more than likely more innocent than anybody on this planet, and they getting raped by a grown-ass pervert, you're going, oh, well, he's, 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 uh, he paid me your shekels. You going to be okay with that? No, you're not. You know what I'm saying? S sit down, let's deal, let's, uh, let's go over it. Yo, you owe me some shekels. Uh, well, you know you, you, know you got to keep her now. No, you're going you gonna to blow his head off, or you're going to try to tear it off with ten fingers, man. Yep. And that's a righteous killing. It's not a yep. murder. Come on. You know what I'm saying? You have a righteous reason for killing this man because he took didn't uh the 12 sons of of, of israel kill a man for, for the prince of those country for raping their sister they plotted against it and killed all the men when they were circumcised physically and they were sore rose up and killed them all because that man took his their sister and raped her so what are you talking about it's lawful man it's not lawful it happens but it's a consequence you either get put to death but if she especially if, she, if she's betrothed but if she's not betrothed you have to pay that fine and you have to be responsible for it. Yep, yep. And if you get caught by a real man, he gonna kill your ass. Straight That's up. Right. You ain't finna rape none of my especially especially not not nobody of my nation, man.
you ain't finna do no raping, period, man. And you, you brothers out there, you Israelites, you need to stand for something, man. You standing up for rape and promoting rape. Bitch ass shit. Man, you dudes must not got no family, man. But y'all think y'all talking like, uh, like I said, none of us over here with that gangster. We don't make threats on videos. Nah, nah, but y'all nah, nah. coming at brothers that actually stand for something that we believe is the right thing. And you think you coming against us is going to mean something with that tough talk? Yeah. Trust and believe me. You cross that line, that's your ass. Straight up. Gun line, ball. And it's not even a joke, man. It's like, you're supposed to be teaching the brothers how to get right. Yep. How is rape righteous? Come you're on. taking advantage of a woman, and you're and she's the weaker vessel. You must be weak because the weaker vessel got you out of your character to where you are burning your lust and you have to take her virginity. That's a weak man. Yep. I'll get horny, but I'm not that horny. To the same degree. Take yeah, especially, I wouldn't have to deal with prostitutes. Yeah. I'm not a private man, but I got too much pride to lay down with a hoe. Yeah. I mean, most of us don't know if she's a hoe or not, but I'm not going to pay for sex. No, yeah. And you have a higher chance of getting herpes dealing with prostitutes, even if you have protection. But Quash expounded on that, man. Yeah. Hey, well, a lot of these prostitutes have husbands, man. Yep. They got pimp boyfriends. They their boyfriend pimps. That's technically their husbands, man. And he, okay, they're a whore. they out there, but you ain't supposed to be, you ain't supposed to be dealing with no prostitutes. That's a whole nother lesson, man. But a, a sociopath will have you doing everything that's contrary to these scripts, man. Everything that's contrary to spiritual growth and to uh, perfecting yourself enough for you to be set up for salvation. Let's get on with this because now we're going to have to make it into two parts. We're going to finish up on this part. This will be considered the introduction and then we'll go ahead into the, me the meat of it. All right. Um, it says, religious sociopaths feel that they're entitled to have their way since it is their right to abuse people. Being extremely sophisticated liars, they decide to believe their own lies at will. They are extremely refined in their quickly thought out persuasive answers, knowing to whom and when they can lie and get away with it. See, Polite called y'all out on that, man. Mm -hmm. He might be a Hamite too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might be a Jake. He might just be a Jake that uh, sold out and um, really wanted to have his place. Like he said, he wants the kingdom now and later. But he might be a straight up Hamite, man, and he called you out on it. So you got confounded by a heathen if he is one. It says, friends and other people are just opportunities to exploit and control. They do have friends for many years, but the friends all end up as victims, like you see in Gabar and Orion Lab. Those are two victims, man. They hella scared. They scared to speak out or say anything. Anytime they say something, Brother O'Rourke, oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, that, that's right, that's right, yes, yes. Oh, I know what you're talking about when you got, uh, when you checked about the, 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 all the time, all the time. But the main the one time. that I was talking about, I seen when he was talking about uh, fasting. He was that, like, oh, yeah. that's a bullshit fast. That's a bullshit, yep, oh yeah, yep, 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 yep. that is a bullshit fast. You ain't got all the time mind. though, anytime <clears throat> the elder grandmaster, um, Tahar speaks, it, it supersedes everything that a brother said. But you are an elder too, right? You're an elder apostle, right? The spirit's on you, right? Why are you always being superseded by this man? I thought the spirit was ultimately that um, that that ultimate um, um, authority. Is the, you don't have the authority. Who has the authority? Is it just that one man, or is it the Grand Master, Elder Apostles of Great Millstone? See, it's a lot of confusion going on because there's crazy sociopaths that's lying to the people, and there ain't no truth, man. It's it's a lie, and it's just confusion, confusing. It says friends and other people are just opportunities to exploit and control. They do have friends for many years, but the friends all end up as victims because a religious sociopath does not truly love others. The love, friendliness, and compassion is unfair, is themed. It is actually hatred. There is no remorse for those who are hurt or crushed by them. They do, See, if one of them elders, so-called elder apostles left or got kicked out or something, you will see how much that uh, the other elders really never liked them. It would all come out. They would call them all types of names, they would defame their character, and they would belittle them and talk down on them, going and showing that they really hated them all through the years. Ain't they doing that to you now? Yeah, I was in it for six years, and it was always love, love, love. But I tell a brother, hey man, I'm, I'm trying to do this work outside the banner of Great Millstone, and, 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 and for that I received nothing but hate, excommunication. There wasn't no brothers trying to restore me or nothing. Before you continue, remember you made a statement about the hypocrisy or, or the lies? Yeah. How they start believing their own lies mm -hmm. where a brother can, where, where they say one thing and then they do another. Your call, he did that. Before all of this even happened, he made a mention. I remember I was at camp, you talking about brothers, uh, all of a sudden when they fall out, they got all this shit to talk. 
He's doing the same thing to you. <laughs> and it's just like, you left peacefully, yep. and he wanted beef. Now all of a sudden, man, it's just like, now it's you. You're the, he's the victim of his own, of, of what he walked himself into. Demons, man, straight demons. And they lie so much, they don't even believe themselves. Anything, it's a, it's a warped reality that a lot of brothers live in. This is the mind of a sociopath and a psychopath. You created a whole alternate reality within the life that we're living. Now you believe this is this and that is that. A brother will go and tell you the sky is red and if you don't believe it, you're crazy and you you, you, are, you, you bucking up. The ex communicating you for having your own brain and mind. That's a sociopath, man. You gotta get down or lay down. What you think Charles Manson was all about? And that little family he started when he, mo he moved out to the desert, had all them crazy people living with him. They was getting high on drugs, they had an excuse. What is y'all excuse, man? Grown, sane men, well, maybe it's too much alcohol, or maybe it's the, 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 the drunkenness of pride or the drunkenness of ego. But you brothers should have no excuse not to see a lot of these traits and characteristics. But with us pointed out, you have no excuse now, man. If the Most High decides to start judging you guys, you have no excuse because we're showing you that you're following sociopaths and psychopaths. They can uh, get, find something in the scriptures that justify something that they like, they're gonna put it on blast. Yep. Take pictures with wine bottles and all that. Remember the brother from Louisiana, I think I mentioned it before. I mean, that's his women, whatever, but even if she's just your little, your heathen woman, you don't put her ass on social media. Oh, wow. Because I, I seen, I was like, damn, she got a fat ass. And I was just like, see, that puts that impression in my mind, like, you know, do this work, you get rewarded with women, and, you, and then you putting out that vibration of just exploiting the women. It's like you're supposed to be a righteous man. If you're doing that, do that on your personal business. They don't truly empathize, but have contempt, disdain, and scorn for others and for the most high. See, so you got to understand these brothers that are in the sociopathic, um, pathological liar, psychopathic nature, they actually hate the most high. We know that those are all the characteristics of Satan, being a liar, being a hater. <laughs> You know, being a lover of self, being prideful, pretty much being a murderer, those are all the signs of an antichrist. It said the sympathy is feigned. And can you look up that word feigned? Feigned. F F E I G N. F E I G N. Okay. F E I G N. It says because their sympathy is feigned. See, the opposite of a of a sociopath is an empath, somebody who has empathy. But there are extremes to both. Not everybody who's empathetic are just, you know, bend over, hey, hey you can slice my head off type of brother just giving himself over like that. Some brothers just have compassion and have an emotional um, sympathy and empathy for uh, other men. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. You're not a softy for that. Wouldn't you want a brother to be empathetic for you if you were in a uh, state of needing sympathy and empathy? Yeah, to truly understand what you're going through and okay. hear you out. Cause, or even if you can't relate to it, okay. just like take the time to hear you. The exactly. definition of fame is pretend to be affected by mm. a feeling state or injury. Mm. So you front. Yep. You pretend <laughs> to have compassion. Like, oh man, you know, yeah, I feel what you're going through. But at the end of the day, you got to get over that shit. You don't really empathize. You're just analyzing it from a... From a uh, you know, you're not even really putting yourself in their shoes. Okay. You know, to empathize, you got to put yourself there. If you've already been there, you know what it's like. But if you've never been there, try to see yourself like, damn, you know, that would really mess me up too. Yeah. You know, hey, man, I hope you get through this, man. You Come need on. me, I got you. Come on. Come and on. sincerely saying that, not, oh, you do nice things. And then to a certain point, it's like, man, look, I'm tired of this shit. Okay. We know we're not supposed to cradle every dude because at a certain point, you got to get on his feet and stop Come being on. weak. Come on. But you got to show exercise brotherly love. This is the... We are in a time of discipleship. Yep. So we're learning how to be righteous. So when the kingdom comes, we're going to rule perfectly. Yep. All of us is going to rule. So we got to practice. You know what I'm saying? This is practice. Yep. That's why we in these chains of darkness, man. We getting it right. All a sociopath cares of is, can I rule over you? Now we all going to rule. But do I get to be ahead of you? Do I get a title? Competition. Competition, That's man. That's what females do in the gym. We all trying to get to a better part of ourselves and, and, and make progress. You want to compete just because of vanity, man. Who gives a damn about the look? It's, it, another thing with the vanity is look. It's not about what it looked like. Because at the end of the day, like me, I'm a skinny dude. But I be doing things in the gym almost to the same group of dudes that's twice my size. It's not because of my looks. It's because of how I feel about myself on the inside. What I know for sure, for surety of myself. 
You know what I'm saying? But they've been in my struggle too, you know what I'm saying? So they understand it's a struggle being a small dude doing the work, but I don't go in there to compete with bigger dudes. I come in there to get what I get out of it and just keep it going, man. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta take care of number one, and then you can help out number two. But brothers ain't worried about their selves in a, in a sense of helping themselves. They just wanna be over other brothers like a competition, man. It says a religious sociopath have total, total control over a group. Does not Elder Grandmaster Tahar have total control of a great millstone? He sits in Yahweh Shai's seat, so Seb Gabar says he, he quickly claims a very dominant style of leadership, claiming his authority cannot be challenged or questioned, just as the Most High can't be challenged or questioned. In time, he comes to a belief, he comes to believe he is a powerful person who knows so much more than his followers. His followers simply have to obey. He is entitled to their obedience. There is no personal respect for their lives or others, their dreams, their relationships. He is indifferent to the damage caused to others. That word indifferent means you pretty much just don't care. You don't have a you don't have an opinion over it. So if a brother tell you, oh man, my wife just left me, you know, she left and skipped town and killed my babies off. She's going crazy with you. Hey brother, as long as you stay doing this work, that's all that matters. This is just a test, brother, from your house shy. No, brother, you have to get, you have to make sure your house is in order. That's what a brother should be telling you. Hey, brother, maybe you need to take a week off from camp and get yourself in order. I see you declining, bro. Hey, brother, maybe you need to, uh, maybe you need to stop going out and doing what you're doing out in these streets. Maybe you need to focus in on this word, brother. Get right with them, man. Because okay. if you ain't right on the inside, how dare you go speak to another brother how he needs to get right? Mm. You being a hypocrite. Yep. Like if a brother not out there every day putting up some. Sometimes he needs to take time to understand. You can't just go all day, all day, because then it's like sometimes you need to let things develop so you can, so you can grasp the full concept of it before you put it out there. So it's not about produce, produce, produce. It's about making sure you get it right so when you put it out there, you properly feed the flock. Yep. And they will be there. But you're teaching them to exercise it according to their life, not just hear the word and not be doers of it. James 1 and 20, right? Uh-huh. Hey, bro. You got certain men that are set up to go out and preach or put a video up once once a year. But that one video he put up then, then turned a 100 men to righteousness. Now, Who's doing the job more? A brother who scatters the sheep or a brother who's actually bringing brothers into the faith and knowledge? It's not about building up camps and building up numbers. It's about building up brothers' faith. This whole thing is about faith. Yahweh Shai is going to be pulling men up from all around the different walks of life all, all around the earth, man. It's not just about camps. Oh, the most high dealing with this camp. They act like whole camps is just going to be saved and stuff, man. That's not that's not what's going down. Yahweh Shai said he's, we are scattered people. And all we need is faith, man. Brothers gotta have that faith. It says, it says, um, he is indifferent to the damage caused to by, caused to others, and as needed, blames them for the carnage he, the religious sociopath, has caused. A religious sociopath preaches and believes the Holy Spirit is using him only, and the Holy Spirit in practice cannot teach others motivate others or comfort them so why so why are all these brothers coming against us and that's all that we're trying to say is that you're under a religious sociopath who's saying that the most high is only dealing with him he's only imparting the truth unto him or this group and nobody else can get to it except by through him why are our brothers coming at us because they're sociopaths as well see a sociopathic nature is um is contagious man you can put that demon on another brother and have him in that same spirit of trying to be that guy it says, only the religious sociopath can teach and provide comfort. All others need to go through him are the leaders who follow him. He loves deception and is intimately familiar with mind control techniques. We know that there's mind control going on in a lot of these camps and churches, man. We know it and we can prove it through scripture, through um, uh, uh, the, the information. You brothers got to look into uh, uh, us. Sig Sig Freud, uh, what's his name? What's the dude's name, man? Probably don't even know. Sigmund Freud. You gotta look into guys like that. You guys gotta look into the mental sciences of uh, uh, suggestive programming and suggestive um, co 
co coercive suggestion. You know, having a dude do what you want behind using certain words and certain um, uh, demeaning attitudes and the way you come across. So, these psychopaths, they're very high level magicians and you have to understand that their sorcery is based on a scientific uh, formula. They're just using mind control on you. What do you think MK Ultra is? It's just a scientific formula to control minds. And these brothers, they're very good at it, man. These brothers are very good at it. They're black belts at their, their mind control and sorcery. But they got it from Esau, man. They got it from the spiritual demon Satan, put it on Esau and put it on them. It says a religious sociopath says what it takes to satisfy people for the moment, but does not follow through or deliver on promises. He conceals his deep contempt for sincere Israelites or Christians as he politely helps them to understand what he wants them to do. A religious sociopath is deep, deeply insecure. Having his own deep-seated fears, he is highly intelligent and only puts himself in situations where his dictator type behavior will be tolerated or even admired. That's why you got like this guy, uh, Elder Apostle Grandmaster Tahar, he didn't want to go into no debate whether it be on the phone or be face to face with that guy, James White. He said, not interested, goodbye. Because he know that, that that would be an uncontrolled environment and that cracker would eat him up. Not giving no crack, no credit to that cracker, but that cracker would eat Tahar up because T Tahar only puts himself in controlled environments. He's not gonna allow himself to be over talked or to be confounded because that will stop his cash flow. And didn't you bring up earlier about how they tell you what to be, get used to being uncomfortable? Uh-huh. Can't take his own advice though. Come on, come You're on. You're supposed to be a true man to put out, you supposed to be fearless and, and steadfast in your word. Why would this man even pose a threat? You can go head to head with any Jake, <laughs> but on. when an Edomite come up with it, you like, oh, I'm good. I'm That's good, That's the same Goodbye. degree when brothers be like, in, this, in the world, oh, you wanna have a beef with a nigga? But you see a white boy, hey man, you know, let's work this out, man. Yep. You wanna reason with him, yep. but you wanna fight Jake. Yep. So what are you what are you really saying, man? Yep. You know, it's not an attack, it's just like, look, we're just calling out things that we're seeing. And it has to be said. Yeah. See, and, and brothers get in their emotions, they think that now nah, we we attacking them. No. If I call things out as what I'm seeing, you're it's because what you're putting out there. It's the, it's a complete different thing than when I'm just saying, oh, this nigga might be like, it's not something that I'm not sure of. It's like you've done this. Yep. Positive. We have facts of it, video and audio proof of it, man. And slowly but surely, we just gonna start bringing yourselves out. We ain't even gotta cut y'all with the scripture, really. Y'all cut yourselves, man, with your, with your own tongue. Yeah. All things in the dark will be brought to light. That's right. And that's not even by, it just happens with us. We don't seek out videos about you dudes. We don't research your name. Be on the timeline sometimes and a brother just look at the video and be like, oh, wow. Exactly. I'm just, I'm going on YouTube and I'm just like trying to watch some, some stuff about this, you know what I'm saying? Video game, just to, you know, take my mind off certain other stresses. I'm like, oh. Just, <laughs> you know, just killed this. Yeah. He just chopped his own head it off. It says recommended, and I'm like, why is this recommended? Good. Click. Yeah. I see why. Yep. You know, it just happens that way. You know, sometimes you don't be like, I don't want to watch it right now, and then you just happen to watch it. Yeah. You're like, I see why I had to watch it. And they jump on their own sword. Yep. Damn, it's terrible, man. Just talk. <laughs> it says he is highly intelligent and only puts himself in situations where his dictator type behavior will be tolerated or even admired. When he is caught. He mildly apologizes to diffuse the concerns as he embe embezzles pity to escape accountability and then tries to continue on to cause more damage. Just like, just like